Just finding out if any of the candidates have received any endorsements from any organization. Maybe we can go down the canvas and okay. see if any. Go ahead, Jared. <clears throat> I, I received an endorsement from CJ Grisham, the Open Carry Texas. I have no endorsements. Not that I'm aware of. I have no. No. <coughs> Any other questions? Yes, sir? Yeah, uh, mainly to the current sheriff and, and something for the other candidates to think about. Sheriff, uh, right. does the Lano County Sheriff's Department currently have a contract with the, with the District Attorney's Office Civil Section for asset forfeiture funding? Yes. Okay, what, what's your... The average annual balance of this of this uh, forfeiture fund somewhere around uh, depends on the year. Yeah, it depends on luck. But I think our balance right now is around fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars. And and have you have you did you present a, uh, an expenditure budget for that money? Yes. And, and yes. have you already bought the things that you need to buy? We have so far. Yes, uh, we purchased a. Uh, uh, what a civil forfeiture fund is versus a regular budgetary fund. A, budget. yeah, a civil forfeiture is where we will sell assets or cash that is seized from uh, usually drug cases. Uh, we currently, uh, this, in fact, I guess this morning, we're having three vehicles sold uh, at the auction in Lano that were seized due to drugs. The reason we seized the vehicles with drugs and we will we will take about anything almost if it has any value at all because it's just uh, it's a way of making it difficult for them to get around after they lose their vehicles uh, and we also take cash forfeitures that uh, we may seize with someone that has drugs we had the largest one we seized was I think uh, forty six thousand dollars cash wrapped in cellophane and a safety deposit box <laughs> And you get a portion of that, the DA's office keeps right. a portion of it. Right. And uh, that one we had to share with another agency because we right. used the other agency. And uh, uh, we didn't have to sell it. Uh, it's uh, about an 80 20 or 75 uh, 25 uh, split rate between the DA and the. And I just have one more quick question if yes. the folks don't mind. Uh, is everybody on the panel familiar with the mobile data terminal system? Are you familiar with that? Are you familiar with I don't that? know what you're talking about. Mobile, exactly. mobile data terminal system, the computers that go inside police. No, inside the MDTs. Yeah. MDT, yeah. MDTs. Or, 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 does the Atlanta County Sheriff's Department currently we, have MDTs? At one time we had them on a grant, but because of the air cards uh, being $40 uh, per unit, uh -huh. uh, the commissioners, we did not have the money from commissioners to. Uh, to uh, reactivate those air cards. We had them for like a year and that was part of the grant. When we lost the grant, we lost the air cards. We still have some of the equipment, the computers and the, and, and stuff like that, but we don't have the money. What, what, what was the annual cost on that? Just just curious, curious. It's $40 a month for the air card per unit. And you didn't use any of your forfeiture money to keep the no. air cards? No, no, did not. The, I was just gonna bring that point up. He said $40 per unit, but he was meaning forty dollars a month. Yeah, per year. Per year. Right. For a year, it's it's an expensive. Right, right. I mean, it's a needed, but it's about you know, it, it's, it's like your own budget. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna say, well, I'd like to have a forty-four foot TV, but you know, you're gonna be watching a twenty-one inch TV well, because well, that's well, what you can afford. Yeah, but I also know that if you're if you're very active in your criminal investigations as a department. You have more opportunity for forfeiture. Yes, sir. And the more op opportunity for forfeiture is the more free money. I call it free money, but yes. it's, it's bad, bad guys money coming back to the taxpayers and the sheriff's right. department. That money utilized, budgeted on an annual basis, could pay for those air cards. The mobile data terminals is a 21st century, 21st century tool for police officers yes. across the nation. The, the downside to the officers is that they have GPS locators in them. Well, what we do, I mean, it, it, the department needs to know where you're at. Right. And these things, this is a very, very vital piece of equipment. It gives that officer instantaneous access to criminal information on the people that you're about to encounter that you're encountering. Are you talking about cop scenes? <coughs> well, no, no, cop scene. not, not necessarily. It's just, it's just, a, it's a basic program where you, where you fund the MDTs, you buy the equipment that goes in the vehicles, you use 
your budget if the county commissioners will allow it. If not, then you have the option of using your forfeiture money to, to pay for it, and you budget that out every year. But the things about that is that you have to you have to allocate your forfeiture money and know where it's going. Right. One thing about that is that we have a dog that is probably getting ready to come out of service within the next year. Just the purchase of that dog is ten thousand dollars. I understand that. Sorry, and, one more month, one more minute. And, uh, and I'm uh, done. Okay, I just want to put it. To, okay. to add to your, your answer to your question, they had the computers, like you said, but they didn't have they didn't have any software to go with the computer. There was we had the terminal, but there was I worked for them when we had them. The, the the computer with internet access was great, but we didn't actually have a mobile data sync. There was nothing like he said, cop sync. We didn't no, have any. We didn't any, have cop. They just had the computer and an air card. It's there being discussed. Cop, cop sync is being discussed right now with the commissioner, but it's going to be dependent on whether or not there is a vehicle uh, vehicle uh, policy. <coughs> I have read the vehicle policy. It is totally unacceptable the way it is when the commissioner is running. And I'm I'm going to say right now that I don't think all the commissioners wrote it because they didn't know about it until uh, two days before it came out. And if and there was no consultation with me on the writing of that vehicle policy, and it was to be adopted, uh, discussed and adopted last. And I got the I got the thing tabled because I was not consulted at all about the vehicle policy. And obviously, I'm the highest vehicle policy. It'll affect me more than anybody because we use vehicles. And some of the things that the commissioner's court, having no idea about law enforcement and not seeking to be interested enough in law enforcement to come to us and ask us questions and genuinely consider what I recommend. If that vehicle policy remains in its current form, I will refuse to sign it. I will not abide by it. Thank you. Would any of the other candidates like to uh, address how they would allocate those funds? Well, I just have cop sync. We have cop sync with the city of Atlanta. Yeah. It's a very good tool, and we utilize it a lot because there's a lot of times that whenever we're trying to do traffic stops, we're not able to get on the radio. On the air, right? it's, it's very hard. You get 911 calls, that's a priority. You don't want to tie up your, your dispatch trying to you know answer our stuff. So we utilize that a lot, and I try to listen for other officers when they check out. All we have to do is look at the GPS. We're able to go and find our other officers that are out on calls. It is a very good tool, and it would be nice to have for the sheriff's office, and I would highly recommend it. It is a great tool. I will say that. But something that the rest of this panel does not understand that I understand is trying to work with county commissioners and money. The one thing about it, I asked for three cards this year. I got one. They might give me two more. I have needed at least five cards a year to try to replace. Sure. The, 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 not, sorry to interrupt you, but the county commissioners don't have any say-so on what you spend your forfeiture money on. I understand that. I mean, yeah, that, but so I it's, it's, not a, it's not a matter of you having to t ask the county commissioners that you want to buy air cards and software for MDTs. You tell the county commissioners because that's the way the federal and the state statute was written on, on asset forfeiture. You have I, I, the money I, I, in your pocket, $18,000. That would. That's true. You know, I do have that. But the thing about that is not going to last me much more than a year. And then, then I'm going to be in the same position I am right now. Uh, allocation of funds is a very tricky situation, just like I told you, is that I asked for five vehicles this year. They actually gave me one. I have vehicles that have over 150,000 miles on them. These are emergency vehicles. Uh, you know, being here is a lot different than thinking you're here. And I spend a lot of time anguishing at home and at night and during the daytime. Uh, I do try to work with commissioners, but sometimes there comes a point that I can't. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stick up for the sheriff's office and the people of this county and my employees over being pushed by someone else. It's my responsibility as the sheriff to back up my employees and to do what's best for the county and not pay attention, or I pay attention, believe me, but not pay homage to someone that has an agenda other than what it is in law enforcement. My job is in law enforcement and to serve the people of this county and to protect the people that work there. Uh, none of these people 
were there the night that Andy Taylor would die, would got shot. I was. I was there. Well, you remember what it felt like? Yes, I do. And that stays in my mind all the time. I don't want to have an officer killed on my watch. That's why I saturate Kingsland. Most of y'all hadn't been in the back sections of Kingsland. There are some not so nice people back there. There's a lot of Aryan Brotherhood back there, whether or not y'all care to listen to it or not. And I worry about my officers every night, and it keeps me up. And until you're there and understand it, Jared understands it. He's seen the he's seen the areas that we're working. But I guess we. Do y'all have reserve deputies? Do what? Do y'all have reserve deputies? We have some reserve deputies, yes, and we utilize them when we can. Debbie's the, walking toward us. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give the other uh, candidates a chance to answer some questions also. I, I would like to respond to cop scenes. And, you know, it was stated that we, the rest of us don't understand dealing with commissioners. I spent 14 years dealing with uh, council members and mayors and city managers and do understand that that's how we got cop scenes was, was while I was chief. And, it, it's a, it, it's one of those things that at the time I thought the sheriff department was going to get cops and calls over here, which would make this system work a lot better because then you're sharing whatever right. the county's doing is being shared with <coughs> us. Right now, whatever they're, they're getting is going to be from Brady or I don't, does, I don't know if the county, Burnett but it's County. Burnett <laughs> county there's, it, it, they're all kind of removed from us. And you know we need it at home. We need to all be sharing that information, and and so it, it is uh, something that would would benefit the county greatly. But it is an expense. Yeah. Oh, but as far as not understanding, I do understand dealing with five or six or seven people that are wanting to tell you what to do. And and you got to understand, cop sinks nearly a quarter of a million dollars. Other candidates, we have a a question for Mr. Johnson. Yes. Uh, you know, all of you, well, some of you talked about what you would do different as far as uh, training and, and as far as putting uh, the police at different spots. Uh, you know, I guess all of you is under the same limitations uh, of money. And I'm assuming that Lano uh, County uh, gives the Sheriff's Department a budget, so much money. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I guess all of you would be under that criteria that you would have to work with that same budget. So, in order to do that, <clears throat> how would you how would you use that money differently than Sheriff Blackburn to? Because what I would like to see, of course, is someone out in this area permanently, especially at night, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that. Uh, Everybody would like to see that. But I'm told we don't have enough officers for that. Now, some of you or one of you have said that they would like to, to put them out at different spots. Do we have enough officers to do that? Also, you said that we don't have enough pay for these officers. So they come and go. I can understand that. How are you going to raise their pay if you only have so much budget? I, to answer your question, we have more than enough officers. Uh, the the county the county judge did a did a comparison um, of all the like counties in, in the state of Texas. Um, we had more officers by nearly double than any other county of like us. Was, uh, that means the same area and the same population base. Uh, to answer your question about about money, there's only one way you can get more pay. Cause that's the largest line item on the budget. Uh, the only way you can get that is it, is at, go through the commissioner's court to get more money. Uh, we can cut wear and tear on our, on our vehicles along with fuel money. Um, when you don't have to drive across the county to answer calls because you're always stationed in Kingsland, that's going to cut down the wear and tear of your vehicles. Like Shannon said, um, that's going to cut down you're having to run 100 miles an hour to try to get to a call across the county and you hit a deer because you're trying to get there so fast. Um, that's, in my opinion, that's how, that's how you're going to have to do it. First thing needs to be done is an audit of the budget to find out what money is being spent and see if it needs to be spent on another line item. Um, I, obviously, every one of us has a different opinion on how our money should be spent. Um, I may value the MDTs more so than obviously the current sheriff because he hasn't bought them. Um, 
those are the things that I think you're going to have to do. You're just going to have to audit the budget to find out how to move those line items and then work with your commissioner's court as well as there, there are grants. There's grants for, for everything. So you may be able to use some of your, some of your money, um, some of your money from your budget for salaries as opposed to buying equipment and things. When I worked on the border, I realized the border, you're, they're allotted a lot more grant money because we are on the border. But I've worked with agencies where they have people that do nothing but write grants. We have not explored that enough in this county. We're using too much of your money and not enough of the free money that's being given to us. I will say something on that. Grant money has pretty well dried up now. There are not near as many law enforcement grants as there were when I first started. And another thing I would say is that the first thing Mr. Latta said was the judge ran a <coughs> survey. I'm going to tell you something. The judge didn't know anything about law enforcement. But I will tell you something on law enforcement. Is that this is Burnett County over here. This is the population of Burnett County. This is an unincorporated population of Burnett County. 22,000 people. This is Llano County. We have 19,000 people. 65% of our people are unincorporated. That's who we take care of. That's who the Sheriff's Office takes care of. I'm going to show you another quick deal. We have 30 officers. Now this is just officers, just not personnel. We have 30 officers. Burnett County has 45 officers. Now I'm going to show you a chart that we <coughs> have We have, Burnett County has 45 officers. We have 30. Last year, <coughs> Burnett County filed 137 felony cases. Guess what? Last year with 30 officers, we filed 230 felony cases. This is with the, this is with the uh, uh, district attorney's office. These, these figures came from the district attorney's office. Now we are busy here. We have a lot of responsibility. As, as far as the budget goes, uh, the survey that the judge ran, I'm sorry, I, I would not, I, I've looked through the survey, it doesn't make any sense. And it's not a law enforcement survey, not a law enforcement survey, it's a judge's survey. <coughs> you need to compare lack to lack. There was nothing taken into the dynamics of unincorporated areas. Unincorporated areas <coughs> is what we deal with, what the sheriff's office deals with. That's Tau, that's Buchanan. That's uh, Inks Lake Village. That's, that's Kingsland. <coughs> Last year, we had 11, about almost 12,000 calls for service in Llano County, fiscal year 2015. 12,000, almost right at 11,800 and something calls. 86% of the calls we received for service were east of Highway 16. 14%. Now, I don't know about him having sectors, and we talk about sectors and stuff like that. If you go deer hunting, you go where the deer are. You don't go deer hunting where there's not any deer, or very few. We go where we are call-oriented. We go where the population is. West, east of Highway 16, we have about 11,000 people. West of Highway 16, we probably have 1,000, 1,500. We're going to have more calls. It, it's the dynamics of the situation. You know, if, if I get calls, and, and the, the deal I refer back to Andy, and, and she knows this, we all know it. We know what dead looks like. Amen. And it was a friend of ours. And I didn't, I don't think Amy did either, but that day, I didn't go to bed. I didn't go to bed that night. It happened about 10.30 at night. And we found him the next morning at 11 o'clock, the guy that killed her. And I didn't go to bed that night. And I know Amy didn't go to bed. No officer in the county or anywhere around went to bed that night. But that still stays with me. And every time I drive by Dilly and Skyline, I look at that cross and I think about Andy. Hey, Bill, okay. tell him now. Tell him where they found him, though. The, the gentleman that, that we found him right down here at Cedar Point. <coughs> he was down here at Cedar Point. To, to touch on what Sheriff Black was talking about, about what he knows what dead looks like. Obviously, I'm not dead, but I know what it's like to be in a pursuit and I know what it's like to be shot at. I was 
last February I was in a pursuit that took me 30 miles up to Pontotoc, Texas. That's out of our county, but I left, it began in the city of Llano. I didn't, my radio doesn't work up there. My, I had no communication with any neighboring agencies. I was being shot at for 30 miles. I know what it's like. The closest backup I had to me was some other, was, was another trooper from a different county. That was the first person that got to me. I know how long it took for a sheriff's office to get to me because they had to come from Kingsland. I know what dead looks like, and dead will look like it anywhere in this county. It doesn't matter how many people work, how many people live in that portion of the county. Dead is dead, like he said. So he said he hunts with, you hunt with a deer are. Apparently he doesn't think there's any people in Tau. I'm looking at quite a few people in Tau. I've heard lots of calls when I'm working to happen in Tau. They still have to come from Kingsland. So I'm assuming he's telling me that there's not any population in Tau because you don't get the coverage in Tau. That's, that's, what I, that, that's my take on it. I wanted patrol sectors where there are population, as he's talked about. But Tau has population, Buchanan has population, and Southern County has population. Jared, how much time you spent down here in Tau other than as the sheriff's office officer? I come up here quite a bit, actually. Really? I do. You know a lot of people here in Tau? I know a few, yes. Have you known them for 30 years? I have. You had them. How old are you? I'm 33. I'm 33. 33. You know, I hate to tell you this, Jared, but I was uh, working on the border like you talked about. And uh, I was arresting people about four years before you were born. I agree. Let's, let's move on, folks. All right. Well, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Can we go to Chad? That's fine. Go ahead, Chad. I just want to say one thing. I live in Kingsland. I've been on every road in Kingsland. I know what the problems are in Kingsland. Again, too, sectors, patrol sectors, allocation. It's allocation. And yes, uh, Kingsland is our biggest problem. And I know most of the problems. I probably don't know most, uh, the, uh, the players as well, but I've dealt with this for 40 some odd years now, and I continue to deal with it even as a private citizen in this day and time. Uh, it's allocation. It all depends on who the boss thinks, where the boss thinks the allocated monies, patrol, people, enforcement need to go. And it's individual on individual basis. Uh, by living in Kingsland, I want to be proactive. I'm going after them myself. Yes, there's a lot of function that the sheriff has <clears throat> that is more than enforcement, but I'm an enforcement agent. I remained an enforcement agent till the day that I retired. I intend to keep enforcement as a priority. There's a <clears throat> dealing with commissioners, administrative is definitely one of our <clears throat> hardest things to do. But I know the enforcement angle. <clears throat> and I believe by living in Kingsland, I can deal with those problems easier that I can allocate more deputies to be in Tau, Horseshoe Bay. There's nothing in the east sector, as a matter of fact. <clears throat> and it's because everything's allocated to Kingsland. And I need to, I need, we need to reallocate our resources. Okay, thank you. I'm not CNN or Fox News, but we kind of need to move along. So, uh, not a moderator by any. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to go to Amy. I'm going to give her seven minutes. That's about the same amount of time they had. And then I'm going to give you, with the exception of Jack, he didn't have <coughs> time. He quit. So, um, but anyway, seven I'm not minutes through. seven minutes. I'm okay, not, not through. through. No, ma'am. Okay, you, two more minutes in for you. You want, you want to talk two more minutes? I'd love to. Go ahead. And then we'll give Amy seven and then... Um, Mr. Schilling. I want to talk to you a little bit about these uh, seized funds. I dealt with seized funds. In fact, as I started some of the programs with DEA, where we seized funds with the Sheriff's Office, with DPS, and we started sharing funds. We need to be very careful about that. As a matter of fact, I think there's some new regulations coming down about seized funds from the government going to local authorities. The Sheriff may know more about that than I do right now, but I can read. Uh, we need to be very careful about planning our future on funds that come from from uh, dope deals or, or whatever illegal activity we need to be very careful with that number one it gives us the wrong idea number two you can't count on it and it can change at any moment uh, we need to deal with uh, a gentleman came in the other or it was at our meeting the other day and he said you know what I am tired of hearing about how much money we need to spend or this or that he said I'm looking for the best that I can get and you know what that's what it's about when you go to vote, you look at, this is the best that I can get. This is the best that I can do. Not necessarily the cheapest. Yes, we've only got so much money. We can only spend so much money. But we need to reallocate it. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Hey, uh, I'm going to stand up a little bit. My legs are cramping up. I'm going to talk a little bit better and I can project my voice. You know, we're talking about a lot of Kingsland. I worked Kingsland for many, many years. I was the only officer on the street at times, and I mean, it would be all weekend. There's times I'd turn around and I'd need backup, and this man backed me up. But the thing about it is, we need, whenever we're taking calls in Kingsland, that's where you need to be. But whenever you don't have any calls and you're having a, an easy going day, sometimes those days happen, then you need to leave Kingsland, start hitting the other, the other part of the county and getting to know the county. We have officers that are responding and they're tying up the radio. Whenever you can get on the radio, you're tying it up by going, where's that road at? Lano, can you give me directions? I need directions. Lano's a big county. If you're a, a patrol officer, you're a deputy for Lano County, you need to get out and know these streets, get to know your areas. Because if it is a 911 call and you're needing them, they need to know where they're going. There's times you get going and you're like, all of a sudden your brain goes blank and you need directions, but they tie up the radio a lot when asking for directions. That is for the lack of knowing your county. You need to get out there and know your county. Get out and patrol, work traffic. Tao's got drug problems, King's got drug problems and we're going to have to do something about it. They expect, you know, the citizens expect us to know everything, to, to, to know your crime areas. You're going to have to start calling in and getting with us and saying, look, we have a problem here. We see a lot of traffic coming in and out of this residence. I think it might be a dope house. Let's get it checked out. You know, if we don't know about it, we hear complaints later, but they want to know why we're not doing anything about it. I hear that all the time. You know, we're pretty fortunate. We've got a rapport with the, with the citizens of the city of Lano. Um, not all of them, but you know, we, we're out eating or we're out patrolling. They'll stop me and say, hey, this is what's going on in this neighborhood and you want to check it out. You know, we're going to have to get the community involved so that way we can be more productive in serving your community, okay? Um, there's a, a lot of issues with drugs going in and out of our school. I work for Lano ISD. They pick up, there's kids that are taking dope to school. They're taking it, they're smoking it in the bathrooms. I also want to work with the schools on seeing what we can do about, you know, for drug pro programs within our school. I want to see officers patrolling our, our schools too. I want to see an officer going into the schools, walking, just being, a, you know, being an appearance and having us there. Well, might might deter some of the problems of kids wanting to be bringing dope to our schools. Um, whenever I worked for the county, I had a supervisor, Jimmy Hopkins. And what he started doing, whenever we had investigations and we had cases and we pursued charges, he started asking for restitution. For whatever time it spent, said it took five hours to do this case, to work a case, we asked for restitution whenever they were arrested. No, no ma'am. No, there's no DARE program. Um, they have officers that go in and visit with the kids, but there's no really set program for it. Um, we have officers that they, they request officers to come in and visit with the elementary students, but whenever it comes to the, the junior high and the high school level, there is nothing. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. It's kind of for everybody. Uh, just a, a thought and what your thoughts are on it. Uh, working with Crime Stoppers. Uh, do y'all work with Crime Stoppers? Uh, mostly do y'all work with Crime Stoppers? Yes. Have you requested funds from Crime Stoppers? Also, I've worked with Crime Stoppers and there's a way of, of uh, restitution from the criminals that the judges can require them to pay Crime Stoppers a certain amount of money also. Well, also I'm working with- well, I never have like, I never have requested from, from Crime Stoppers. You can request it. We used to do it in San Antonio. Um, also, your community, uh, as far as like neighborhood watch, <coughs> where we understand that there's not enough officers. Your officers are going to go, I don't care where you put them at, they're going to go with a call they're at. You can be way out of here, how, and if they need another officer, Kingsman, the officer's going to go to Kingsman. So it's got to be wherever your calls are at. But your neighborhood watch, as far as working with neighborhood watch, working with retired officers, there's a lot of retired officers I know here in Atlanta County, uh, with their eyes and their help, getting them together and maybe making, maybe not a reserve program, but something where their knowledge, uh, a lot of them have knowledge in different areas and using them without having to <coughs> money. 
but what are y'all's thoughts on, on not just the money you have, but as far as using the community? I, you want me to answer? Yeah. It's to everybody, so. Uh, I, would, I would love that. Uh, as far as what Amy brought up a while ago about people contacting us and letting us know when there's increased activity uh, from a certain house. You know, it's, if you see somebody drive up to a house and go in for five minutes and leave and, and then, uh, you know, 20 minutes later or 30 minutes later you see another car, let us know about it. It gives us the opportunity to, to know where the area is because we don't know where everything is. Most of our stuff comes from the public. Uh, you know, to start working on something. And one thing people here in the community need to know, uh, and I want to say this a while ago, uh, we have a guy named Richard Harris, who's currently one of my deputies. He is a really good deputy. He's pretty aggressive, which I don't mind having at all in my, in my employees. And Richard, I hate to lose him, but he's getting ready to be your constable. And, yeah. and I will tell you that Richard is a, about a I think he has around 20 years experience. He is a really good guy. He's kind of gruff on the outside, but he's got a good heart. And he will work hard for y'all down here. And that will help us a great deal because uh, he's worked with us quite, quite a long time. And uh, I, I'm, I'm glad y'all have him, but I sure hate to lose him because he is a really good <coughs> Thank you. Yes, Judge. In, in response to that, um, just so everybody knows, it may help alleviate some of all of this dissension up here. He is very much involved with CAP, and he plans to be yes. out here very visible quite often. He, he has already talked to us about it, he's going to be up and down the streets out here. He wants to be involved in this community as much as he does in the rest of the community that's in Precinct 2. He is a good guy. My understanding is he's going to be sworn in February 1st. Well, 29th, I think. Because he was the only one running. So they're going to go ahead and appoint him to finish out this term. We've been without a constable for over yeah. two years now. So it's it's going to be a boost for all of us. So I hope everybody's happy. It's not going to be a boost for me. I wish I was <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've met Officer Harris, and he is... I remember a, a, a large group to figure out how to place some people in this county that can effectively be more geographically located, uh, which is something that does need to be need to happen. <clears throat> we don't need everybody responding from one place in the county to wherever the next call is. They, if, if the call is down in this area, there should be somebody in the precinct two area or the precinct three area, precinct one, precinct four, there the lines can be crossed as needed and if you have a, a serious call, they then the neighboring guys can go help. But you're gonna have a better response time if you face people out. Uh, so and I know I'm getting back to we kinda got off on other things and I'm going back to where we were a few minutes ago, but that's because I we got off on something else and answered some, some questions, but as far as budget and money, you're going to have to take, there's, there's a limit, there's a limit, there's no, we don't, there's no, the purse strings are open for the sheriff's department, there's a limit. So you're going to have to take what you've got and realize that you might be able to get a little bit of an increase here or there, but you're going to have to be creative and make some adjustments and move money from one place to another in your budget because we've talked about training. <clears throat> I don't think there's near enough money in the budget for training for the training of 55 people that work for the Sheriff's Department. Because also along with police training with uh, deputies being trained, you have jailers that have to be trained and you have dispatchers that have to be trained. So it's not just the 30, it's the whole 55. And there's not enough money. I would tell you, I looked at it. There's not enough money in there to train 55 people. The good thing is, is you can have free training on the internet through TCOM, which is a state agency, state agency that regulates peace officer licenses. Um, as I stated earlier, I have my uh, peace officers 
instructor certification I'd love to put on schools. I'd love to instruct and have free schools put on our own stuff with some help. And so I think those issues and the issues of the budget I think can be resolved. It's going to take some thinking, it's going to take some doing, and, and that's going to be up to the sheriff and the people that he has working with him to figure out how can we place these people out here. How can we draw lines and say, okay, well, this is your area and this is where you'll assist. You know, how can we take money out of one part of the budget whenever we already know it's a tight budget, but you're going to have to figure out how to do that. And adjust because, like I said, you're not going to have free money. It's not, you, there's areas where you can get some money, I'm sure. You can change from one place to another, but you're not going to have an open purse string to spend as much as you want, so you're going to have to figure it out. As sheriff, that's what you're going to have to do. It's not going to be an easy thing. That's all I have to say. May I respond? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, 